It's Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Let's talk about the news. From Bloomberg, IBM to pause hiring for jobs that AI could do. The CEO of IBM has announced that the company will pause hiring for roles that can possibly be replaced with artificial intelligence tools in the coming years, impacting up to 26,000 workers and resulting in around 7,800 jobs cut based on current estimates. These are just estimates at the moment, and the wave of interesting and seemingly useful technologies we're seeing right now could turn out to be a flash in the pan after the dust of novelty has settled into something more tangible. But this is expected to be a stance many business leaders will take in the coming months and years as these tools show themselves to be increasingly powerful and flexible. This announcement landed around the same time as an educational support company, Chegg, announced new revenue forecasts that include a loss of around $1 billion, attributing that loss to students using AI tools like ChatGPT to learn and research and practice instead of using services like the ones they sell. From Axios, Yellen breaks the debt ceiling ice. After several months of silence, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has announced that the country could hit its current debt ceiling limit as early as June 1st, which makes raising the debt ceiling a vital, near-future priority. Yellen previously warned that this deadline, at which point the U.S. will no longer legally be able to pay debts it has already accrued, defaulting on those debts, with all the reputational and practical consequences that come with such a default, was approaching a few months ago. And this new announcement means Biden's Democrats and House Speaker McCarthy's Republicans will need to figure out an agreement that will lead to a vote to raise the debt ceiling within the next few weeks. McCarthy is keen to get the Democrats to streamline or eliminate much of the new spending associated with some of Biden's big policy victories, like the Inflation Reduction Act, while Democrats are arguing that using the debt ceiling as a negotiating tool amounts to blackmail, holding a gun to the country's head, basically, and that they are open to discussing cuts separately, but not in a way that ties those discussions to the debt ceiling issue an issue that Republicans have always voted for without question when a Republican president is in office. And from the Washington Post, hundreds of thousands in France protest Macron's pension law on May Day. France's May Day parade, which celebrates workers, was larger than usual this year, as citizens flooded city streets to protest a recently passed increase to the official age of retirement in the country, from 62 to 64. French President Macron has argued that these reforms were necessary to prevent the depletion of the government's pension coffers, while protesters have claimed that raising taxes on the wealthy and corporations would work better. France's retirement age is one of the lowest in the industrialized world, but locals have been, perhaps understandably, proud of that and were very keen to prevent this reform's passing, which Macron pushed through without a vote, leading to two no-confidence votes against him, which he survived. These May Day celebrations had a mostly festive vibe, but 291 arrests were made across the country, some fires were set, and public property damaged, and union leaders have refused to negotiate with the government over relatively minor details of the pension plan, signaling that they were not done fighting the larger issue of the retirement age increase. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.